The Rosicrucian path is the journey of the mystic. Few souls brave it at any single time. Yet, it is this internal voyage that has rewarded many of our greatest minds with the ability to enrich the world. But it is a pilgrimage each individual must travel in their own time, for it reveals the path of knowing. It transcends time and space. This path of the Rosicrucian reveals higher truths for personal evolution. You are invited to witness its sacred history. One of the most influential and pervasive mystical traditions, the Hermetic Path, is founded on the essential unity of all things, as above, so below. This phrase emphasizes the connection between the divine and the earthly and points to the way of a return to the source. Its practitioners strive for the practical means to achieve reunion with the source of all being. Thus, Rosicrucianism is in a sense the heir to Hermetic tradition. The ancient Egyptian figure known as Toth has been described as the god of magic, inventor of writing, sustainer of the world, and was later associated with the Logos and with Plato's mind of divinity. When Alexander the Great conquered Egypt in 332 BCE, there began a fusion of Hellenistic and Egyptian traditions, which not only produced a rich and creative culture, it also allowed the wisdom of ancient Egypt to be transmitted throughout the Western world. In this process, Toth became assimilated to the Greek Hermes. By the 2nd century BCE, many of Toth's epitaphs were attributed to Hermes. The title Trismegistus, that is, thrice greatest, emerged. When paired with Hermes' name, it clearly stemmed from Egyptian references to Toth. At this time, an abundance of literature attributed to Hermes Trismegistus circulated around the ancient Mediterranean, philosophical and mystical treatises, as well as a collection of technical writings on diverse topics including magic, alchemy, and astronomy comprised these works. In ancient Egypt, each temple had a mystery school attached to it known as the House of Life. Here the ancient mysteries were transmitted to initiates. During the 18th dynasty under Thutmose III, all of these houses of life were united into one order, and the seeds of the modern Rosicrucian order Amorc emerged. As Hellenistic civilization blended with Egyptian life during the Ptolemaic dynasty after Alexander the Great, the teachings of the houses of life eventually evolved into the Hellenistic Corpus Hermeticum, a collection of philosophical writings and the practical Hermetica. It is this ancient knowledge, credited to Hermes Trismegistus, that has survived through the ages and is said to have influenced many of the major religions, including Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Among the most interesting modes of transmission were the Sabians of Haran, on the border of modern-day Turkey and Syria, practicing Neo-Pythagoreanism, Neoplatonism, and alchemy they adopted the Hermetic Corpus Hermeticum as their scriptures, and within Islam successfully identified Hermes Trismegistus with the Quran's Idris, Enoch. Being the home to translators of Greek mathematics and astronomy, these, along with Pythagoreanism and Hermetism, were effectively transmitted to the Muslim world. It may have been from the Sabians that a copy of the Corpus Hermeticum made its way to Constantinople and from there, Florence, after the 15th century fall of Constantinople. Hermetism is what we, the term we usually use for the study of the Hermetic materials, such as the Corpus Hermeticum and the Practical Hermetica in the ancient world, up until the Italian Renaissance. At the time of the Italian Renaissance, when many of these materials were rediscovered because of the fall of Constantinople and bringing uh, these materials back over to the West, the term that is usually used is Hermeticism. So Hermeticism is really the study and practice of the Hermetic tradition from the Italian Renaissance to the present. In Egyptian myth, Toth is described as the spirit and intelligence of the Creator, God of learning and of healing, judge of celestial disputes and secretary of the deities who weighed the souls of the dead. It was he who uttered the words that reunited the severed members of Osiris after the latter's murder by Seth. 
The Egyptian god Toph, who is the god of magic and the arts, uh, letters, learning, great teacher of, of humanity, has many counterparts. The most common in the ancient world among the deities were Hermes from Greece, Mercury from Rome, and Odin uh, from the northern lands. In addition to that, there were counterparts throughout the world as a culture hero, that is to say one of the great teachers of humanity. Others include Krishna, Vishnu and Manu in uh, India, and then of course Zoroaster in Persia. Uh, these are examples of those who educated humanity in the beginning. Now, a, a side note is that it's very interesting that the planet Mercury is associated with Wednesday in a great number of cultures around the world. So there does seem to be some sort of ancient link of, to this uh, person who is an educator of humanity. As we have seen, Hermes Trismegistus had his own body of scripture called the Corpus Hermeticum, as well as the Practical Hermetica, collections of writings centered on the themes of self-revelation, the oneness of the cosmos, the direct knowledge of the divine, alchemy, and many other subjects. Hermes Trismegistus, though, is not exactly a deity, but more of a superhuman benefactor of the human species like the bearded demigods of Mesoamerica or the legendary emperors who began the Chinese chronicles, he is at one teacher, ruler, and sage who brought science and art to humankind in its infancy. Hermes in his many manifestations is well known for leaving distinguished pupils. His line is said to include Orpheus, Pythagoras, Plato, Apollonius of Tyana, and Plotinus. In order to understand the often enigmatic language passed down, it is important to understand that the Hermetic art speaks of two fundamental principles, soul and luna. The qualities applied to them are numerous and often confusing. Soul is sun, gold, heaven, and light. Luna is moon, silver, water, stone, ocean, night, and many more. It is far from clear at first what these terms mean, but it is said that one must understand these principles within oneself in order to harness the greater power of this wisdom. To simplify further, we could say that soul, the sun, gold, represents the principle of consciousness, that which experiences the I. Luna, on the other hand, is a name for that which is experienced. The Greek word hyle is usually translated as matter but it seems more to resemble Eliphaz Levi's astral light, a watery astral substance that has no shape of its own but can take on the shapes of specific things. Hermeticism, in one of its many dimensions, could have to do with transmuting the lead of ordinary experience into the gold of consciousness. Alchemists say you have to have gold in order to make gold. This would mean that you have to start with the raw material of your own experience, lead, using what consciousness you already have, gold, to create more consciousness. The secret uh, sermon on the mount is one of the tractates of the Corpus Hermeticum. And in it, Hermes is discussing with his son Tot the, the nature of transmutation and transformation. And one of the key elements of this tractate, and in fact all of the Corpus Hermeticum, is the superiority of mind and the ability of mind to actually uh, bring forth manifestation in matter. In an excerpt from the Corpus Hermeticum, Hermes states, Your will flows from you and everything returns to you. Receive from all their rational offering. Preserve the all that is within us, O life, preserve it. O light, illuminate it. O divinity, place the spirit within. It is your mind that plays the shepherd to your word. O creator, bestower of the spirit upon all. The conquest of Constantinople in 1453 by the Turks caused an exodus of Greco-Roman culture. In particular, the works of Plato, Hermes Trismegistus, and others who had only been known in Western Europe from various extracts to resurface in Italy. Cosimo de' Medici, the ruler of Florence, was aware of the importance of these ancient texts, so he created the Platonic Academy of Florence and funded the translation of many ancient Greek texts, including the long-lost Corpus Hermeticum. 
It was at this time during the Italian Renaissance that the foundation of Western esotericism, including alchemy, astrology, magic, Kabbalah, science of numbers, and divination was established. Not long after, beginning in 1614, the Rosicrucian manifestos were published and there was a clear refoundation of Western esotericism that would carry on until today, passing on the ancient symbols, rituals, and practices one must undergo in order to attain oneness with the universe. As above, so below. Although we do not have an original of this most famous hermetic statement on alchemy, the Latin headlines on one of the most famous plates of the secret symbols of the Rosicrucians reads, The Emerald Tablet of Hermes. The words of the secrets of Hermes, while inscribed around the emblem itself is the well-known alchemical phrase vitriol, meaning, visit the interior of earth, and by rectifying, you will find the hidden stone. The Philosopher's Stone is said to hold a key to transmutation from lead into gold, but the wise initiate understands that this is a transmutation of mind, body, and consciousness, meant to impart the sacred wisdom of the living creator.